everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass niggas. Um, and they don't care. We don't give a fuck about your money. I couldn't care less about your fucking money, okay? And that was the N-word heard around the world. Can you believe this little video caused a huge uproar on Twitter? That it was something that tons of people gave their time, energy, or attention to? Discourse online is really just so immature sometimes. Like this is really something people were focusing on like it was a real issue. And word must have gotten around because this woman was actually fired from her job over this video too. So y'all remember this girl, you know, the girl that decided that, you know, she's going to tell a story and call everybody her friends were dating some broke ass ninjas. Yeah. Guess what happened? They fired her ass. <laughs> They blew up her job. They found out where she worked and they blew up her job, baby. And she doubled down. This was her double down video because they made her take the other video down. But she had the nerve to double down and didn't think nobody was going to find you and locate your job. I even called your job. I sure did. I called it. That thing is blocked. You can't even leave a message. They blew up your job. She this is what happens when you spew hate on the internet. It lasts forever. Good luck finding another job because as soon as they see your face and other people see your face, they're going to come back to these videos that are saved forever and people shit. And you're going to lose that job too because no one wants a racy individual at their establishment. Do these people really hear themselves? Does that seem at all proportionate that this woman is clearly trying to start something online, you know, little instigator, and she says the N-word, no hard R, not even clearly referring to black people, and now there are people out there who are insane enough who are think it's fine to just make her unhirable for life. That that's like a, a normal reaction to seeing a video like this. I mean, her TikTok was public. Her TikTok has since been taken down, but it was public. So it's not like this video was something that was leaked. So this woman must have known that she was making herself a public figure and this was a possible outcome of saying what she said, but it's still, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, here is her response video after her initial video dropped and she got all that backlash. So all those nerds in high school, like the weird theater kids and the anime people and ugh, you know who I'm talking about, the people we didn't hang out with. So they've grown up now and they're the ones making the laws. They're the Mark Zuckerbergs. They're the Fauci's of the world of fucking nerds. Those fucking dorks that never got laid in high school and they've got a major chip on their shoulder against the normies. That's why you see all these fat ass fucks making laws. Oh, you can be obese and anorexic. Okay, sure. They're the ones inventing clown world. They're the ones in media. They're the actors. You wonder why actors are so politically leftist? Oh, right. It's because they're loser theater kids. They're the theater kids who grew up and now they're telling me and you what to think. They're telling me and you what to do and they're making the laws in this country. Well, it's time to stand the fuck up and stop being scared. Like, why are we scared of these people? They were massive losers in high school and they're massive losers today. It's time to put the motherfucking nerds back in their place. Stand the fuck up and speak. And now she's being embraced by the edgier parts of the online right. The right should not be promoting or platforming people like this woman just because she says edgy things. I get this as a free speech issue and even though on paper legally we have free speech in this country, like the fact of the matter is <laughs> the reality is that you don't. Like there are certain things you can and can't say and if you say one of the things that you can't say in a public enough way on social media, I guess, then you will get fired from your job. And that's what this woman's demonstrated. There is an accept there is there are clear boundaries of acceptable speech which are probably narrower than they should be, way narrower. And if you step outside them, you get punished very harshly. But to be clear, conservative values, right-wing values are more than just iconoclasm, are more than just spitting at the current status quo, are more than just being the opposite of whatever progressives are. 
And people are really out here like, I can't believe a girl was just outwardly racist and it allowed her to grow a massive platform in the alt-right, like WTF. It's like, dude, you are the cause of this. Your reaction and the fact that you, you've you used like state and private power to cancel this woman, to make her unhirable, is the reason there is this movement. You're feeding the fire. You're fueling this. Some people are smart enough to recognize this, but unfortunately most aren't. And I don't even really agree with this lady that this woman is such a big, bad racist. She's clearly just a troll. But because of people's outrage toward this, this obvious bait, she now has a shot at becoming an e-famous culture warrior. That, that being her new career. For those of you who are upset with what Great Value Pearl said, let me tell you something. I've actually seen her videos before, and the funny thing about Great Value Pearl is that she's either rage baiting or being a pick me or complaining about being single because as we know, the biggest pick me's never get what? Picked. But what I can tell you as a 15 year marketer whose specialty was profiling people online is this latest video is a beautiful illustration of a phenomenon I've seen time and time again. And I've talked about before the book Queen Bees and Wannabes, which is the book that the movie Mean Girls was based from. So if you look at Great Value Pearl through the lens of a Gretchen Wieners or a Karen, i.e. the wannabes, when they wanna emulate who they've decided to choose as their queen bee, in this case, Pearl, they often fail to realize there's a strategy. Pearl for all of the stuff that tumbles out of her mouth straight from a bull's eye, is, if nothing, a strategist. She knows exactly what to say and she knows where to draw the line. Now, Great Value Pearl, I briefly went through her account to try and get a profile reading off of her. And what I can tell you is that she's been at this since 2020. She has a little over 60,000 followers. That's nothing for four years. And she's following the same exact path I see every time another wannabe pops up. She sees what whoever she's emulating is doing and says, I could do this. I could be the same person. I have these same thoughts and all I have to do is get on the internet and squawk. And girl's been squawking for four years and it's not getting her any attention. So she starts squawking louder, saying stuff that she knows is gonna get her attention. And by golly, this last one did. And that's why she followed up with saying, I'm not gonna apologize because the attention she's getting is exactly the attention she was looking for. And to her, she's like, this is exactly it. I'm finally doing it. And I guarantee you, she's sitting back waiting for Pierce Morgan or whomever to reach out to her. And maybe she'll get a little bit of press attention at some point, but here's the thing because she's not strategic, she's gonna be a flash in the pan because you can't sustain without a strategy and I guarantee you she has none. If she had a strategy, it wouldn't have taken her four years just to reach 60,000 followers and she wouldn't have needed to drop the end bomb just to get some attention. And not only does not having a strategy not help you sustain your growth, but it also doesn't help you look out for what we in the marketing biz call watchouts and threats, which is how people embroil themselves in social media scandals that are eventually their downfall and this isn't it. She planned this so she can get the followers that are in her little ideology demographic, right? But eventually she's gonna screw up and piss them off. And because she's so damn predictable, I'm gonna call it right now, as the heat on her grows and people start talking about this more, she's gonna do what I like to call emoji face racketeering. And that's when people use, mainly these emojis are the, are the stars of emoji face racketeering. And that's what people use when they're actually bothered, but they're trying to play it off like they're unbothered. So I guarantee either in her video replies or in comment replies or whatever, there's either gonna be emoji face racketeering or her own face racket, uh, just smiling and laughing to make a point that she's unbothered. But when people do this, it's usually when they're bothered the most. So as much as her rage baiting, I know upset and bothered a lot of you, I hope you can find even a modicum of comfort in knowing that she is a flash in the pan and that she will have a downfall and it will be glorious. So. Get your popcorn ready. I think this marketing lady kind of has a point in the sense that it can be very hard to maintain momentum once you've catapulted yourself into the spotlight like Lily has. There are a lot of people who are would-be e-celebrities or whatever who just fall off, who become obscure because they aren't able to replicate what got them the attention in the first place or they feel the need to escalate and then they don't do it properly and it ends up pissing more people off. Although you can tell that this marketing lady is clearly praying for this woman's downfall. So I think her assessment is kind of colored by the fact that she doesn't want her to succeed. And also 
I think she's grossly underestimating how much of a market for this kind of behavior there really is on the right. Also, this marketing lady definitely seems to be underestimating how thick Lily's skin is because I've seen her beefing with groipers on Twitter and I'm not seeing a whole lot of the laugh or clown emojis being used on her end. And just because it took her four years to get this level of attention, assuming that was even what she was trying to do her whole TikTok career, because again, I haven't seen her account because it's already been taken down. But assuming it took her four years to get here doesn't mean that she's necessarily incompetent or that she's entirely unprepared. Another option could also be that due to all this attention she's getting and all, and all the people who are giving her coverage, she's able to network with people who are strategists, who do know what they're doing, who are able to keep her career alive. Other people have also wondered if this could be astroturfed, which I think is a distinct possibility. But to circle back to what's relevant here, smaller left-wing content creators and internet personalities love the opportunity for performative outrage. That's their whole grift. They love it when someone slips up, in this case it was deliberate, and says the wrong thing so they can virtue signal to all their little fans and followers about how terrible this person is and how good they are for standing up to ignorance or something. I'm about to introduce you to Lily and she just lost her job. Let me show you why. Gold diggers, but that's the exception. I'm the rule. Everybody I know who's married right now, they're married to broke ass um, I went on her Twitter, and of course there are people sharing it that are jumping on the N-word bandwagon. And some of you might be saying, oh, I'm sure she didn't mean it, or it was just a slip of the tongue or whatever. Now nah, she posted this five hours ago, and you can see how many people liked it. So like I said, she's been fired, but she's not smart enough to keep her mouth shut. She said, my former boss is great. I stepped away so she would not lose her business. Leave her alone, y'all. The woke mob is the real problem here. No, it's you. Let's hear her stellar apology, if you can call it that. So a recent video of mine seems to have um, upset members of a certain community. That and it this um, all the backlash just really made me, you know, just really do a deep dive, like do a soul search. And after all that, I still couldn't find a care. You're going to call us racist. You're going to call us potential Timothy McVeigh's. F you. You lose. Good luck. Now the funniest part of this is she doesn't understand what the f First Amendment really means and she doesn't comprehend that every business has the right to fire anybody that goes against their ethical beliefs. Most contracts for any business or job that requires one actually has a morality clause in it. For this reason exactly. Well, I seem to have upset people of a certain community. You didn't just upset the black community. You upset people in the white community, every community, because this is ridiculous. Like you're being a disgusting human being and you're going, look at the woke mob, look at the left. No, it's you. You, you need to do some soul searching, but I think you need a soul first, which clearly you don't have. But she's already become very popular among the right wing lunatics. And this is why we say we need to stop making stupid people famous on Hold the Mic. Live Fridays at 8 p.m., 5 p.m. Pacific. Much love, keep fighting, and keep calling these racist people out. There is no group of people I find more annoying than white liberals like this guy. She doesn't understand how the First Amendment works. Don't you know there's a morality clause? Dude, you are so missing the point. <laughs> this is the, the fact that you're calling this person a disgusting human being for using one word not even directed at a specific black person with a hard R. She wasn't even slurring someone. And she's a disgusting person who deserves to become unhirable. This is a tyrannical social climate. The people who wrote the First Amendment used this word. And they wrote it not anticipating that idiot liberals like this guy would be getting women fired from their jobs 200 years later and then using it as an excuse as to why being a self-hating white liberal who's part of the woke mob is fine. And really the other terrible part about this situation, which I feel never gets enough coverage, aside from the fact that, you know, woke liberals are obviously trying to oppress people and cancel them and that's just inappropriate, is the fact that all this performative outrage that this guy is engaging in and all the people who called this woman's job to get her fired, 
that doesn't do anything for black America. It doesn't make black Americans feel any less secure. They're only turning this word into an even bigger sacred cow than it already is. Having Elvis die in the black community gives Nixon a reason to drop the big one on us. Oh, oh, no, not the big one. The big one is coming. I'm telling you, not that. Uh-uh. What's the big one? The end bomb. The end bomb? You mean nuclear? Worse. Neutron? Worse than that, the real end bomb. The one you can't say on TV. This word holds entirely too much power over black America, and black people need to collectively decide to stop caring. Getting called this word to your face is rude, it's degrading, it's offensive, but re like, the expectation is that a black person will react violently. We see that time and time again in tweets in this discourse that, you know, oh, I bet you wouldn't go into the middle of a large urban city or something and say that, implying that whatever white person says it would catch a beat down. And what's worse is there are black people who contribute to this stereotype. There was even a guy who was threatening violence against this woman. This guy really said, the internet has made non-black people way too comfortable. She's dead serious. We got to start knocking people out again. Tell me, how are you going to be perceived as an equal in this country when your first reaction to hearing a certain word is to respond with violence? It's fragility, pure and simple. The Hodge twins responded to this situation saying, black people are ready to hang this white girl because she said the N-word in a video. Why do we act so weak and fragile? We're ready to burn it all down over a white girl saying our word, but then we are silent when politicians send $100 billion to foreign countries. I don't think that the last part of that tweet is going to change the mind of any left-wing black person who responded like the average black response was to this, but it does highlight how black people are entirely focused on the wrong issues. Another woman said, what I find so interesting about this video going viral is that many black people would argue that the N-word was reclaimed by black people in order to take the power out of the word yet the word actually seems to have more power than ever. This girl can now control millions of sensitive people just by saying it. To truly take the power out of something, you must stop reacting. And I couldn't agree more. That is exactly the correct view of this situation. And what I think this controversy also shows is that there's an underlying reality which people do not talk about. Black America has lost knowledge of self. They have lost perspective. They don't even realize that white America is treating them with kid gloves. Two to three more mostly peaceful protests in a row, and white America would have been ready to throw down. White America outnumbers black America. White America is better organized, better armed, and the only thing stopping them is guilt and internal division. It is astounding to me that black America still feels that it is oppressed when you can openly advocate for beating up white women on Twitter with impunity. The reality of the situation is white people could collectively snap if they get pushed too far. The material reality of the situation is that proportionately black people are more dependent on welfare than whites. So this means that white tax dollars go toward subsidizing black living situation. So in a sense, black America is allowed to live off the largesse of whites. And this is what I call the Lazarus logic of the black man in America. Black Americans are unfortunately more interested in focusing and fixating on some dizzy blonde saying the N-word than they are in solving real problems in their communities. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan warned us in his Savior's Day message that God will continue to force the enemy to show his true colors to us until we understand that it is now the divine time for us to separate from them and build something independent and self-sufficient for ourselves. Our God is tired of his people being the Lazarus in the modern world like this, begging for the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table, begging the white man for justice, begging for jobs, begging for food and shelter even. We have become more dependent on, the, on white America in 2015 than we were in the darkest days of chattel slavery. When did God ever tell the children of Israel 
under Moses and Aaron to go back to Pharaoh and beg him to uh, serve and protect them? When did he ever tell the children of Israel to go back to their former slave masters and ask them to judge over their affairs? He came to make them independent and give them the wisdom to judge over themselves. He came to give them the power to exercise justice in the land of their own. And as the scripture teaches us, the pattern of God never changes. God has come to make us rulers over ourselves as he has promised us. He has come to make us governors over our own affairs. And if it is the will of God for us to be self-ruled, then we must practice now. We must qualify now by, ex by exercising justice and equality where our people live. For how can God give us the kingdom and we can't properly govern a square block radius? We must defend our people from all threats, whether they be foreign or domestic. But as long as people think they can rape and murder our women and children and walk amongst us and shake up with us like it's okay, as long as people think that they can prey on the elderly and the innocent and come back in our circles like it's all right, this only incites the devils on the outside of us because it shows a sign of weakness of the black nation. But when these wicked forces in America see the young black man throughout the country ruling his land with the iron rod of justice, then they will know that black life is not to be played with. And we won't need a social media or a hashtag to prove it. All praise is due to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I don't even believe that most of this N-word discourse is driven by racial animus on white people's part, but rather by frustration because there can't be an open and honest conversation about black America's problems and lack of accountability without stuff like this getting brought up. White people have a desire to say this word because black America, with the help of white liberals, has created a taboo around white people saying it. And they're never going to kill this. The word is like a grand piano hanging over black America's head indefinitely. Any white person could say or think it at any time. But to remove power from the word, black people either need to choose. They have two options. Black people have two options. They can either assimilate into conservative America or separate into something else. Black people can say, you know what, actually, we're Americans like everyone else, and we don't honestly care that much if white people use this word. It's offensive, but we're not going to lose our minds over it. Or alternatively, they could say, actually, no, we're something different, and we want a space apart from whites. So we don't have to constantly feel this feeling of, oh, they could use it at any time to dehumanize us or something like that. Both of these scenarios seem unlikely, in my opinion, and things will, of course, continue as usual, just getting worse with no actual problems addressed or solved. But I would still like to point out that the most ideologically capital B black man in history, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, said that what black people really want is freedom, justice, and equality. And this was not freedom, as in the political freedom to be vassals of the Democratic Party, or justice, as in a reparations check or indefinite tax on white people, which will inevitably be spent on useless luxury items bought from big box stores and never actually circulate the black community, or equality, as in an equality composed of rights and privileges given to black America out of the pity or guilt that white America feels. But rather, this is a freedom as in actual self-rule and autonomous governance. Justice as in having rule of law and order in black communities. And equality as in equal standing as an independent country among the community of nations. I don't think that black people can ever truly feel liberated and free can ever not feel the grand piano of the N-word hanging over their heads until they have built something for themselves. Because otherwise, the grift that left-wing wokesters, the woke mob, loves to do is going to continue indefinitely. And provocateurs like Lily will continue to be taken under the wing of the right in reaction. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
please subscribe and share it if you really liked it. Sub to my Patreon if you're really feeling generous. And Red Channels will catch you in the next one.